It's a bear. We'll see what happens. Yep, the coin's back. I actually found my other coin. I had uh, misplaced both of them, just found one of them. Still missing the old original, but uh, it's a bear, according to the coin. And let's see what happens tomorrow. Man, there's a big, pretty fish right there. Got the live John Pennekamp coral cam up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Most of you folks that live in uh, South Florida are familiar with John Pennekamp Park. Wonderful place to bring the family or you just go yourself and do a little bit of snorkeling. Very peaceful. Uh, this guy seems to be cognizant of the camera there. And that was a Cavalli Jack, I believe, that just went by there. That wasn't a uh, permit. What was a permit or a Pompano we seen the other day? And by the way, thanks for pointing that out to uh, my fishermen uh, and tropical fish guys out there. Well, let's get into uh, the show sponsor. By the way, this is Satire. The, uh, it's the CME Group, the world's leading crooks in the derivatives marketplace, including the silver and the gold market. Uh, again, I just kind of satire, just my way of uh, poking them in the uh, eye a little bit in a satirical way. Of course, you know I'm joking. Um, they're not really thieves, <clears throat> crooks, <clears throat> and uh, uh, <laughs> they're not the world's leading uh, uh, bullshit paper marketplace. <clears throat> no, they're not that at all. Well, anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, certainly, uh, I don't think they'd ever sponsor me. Maybe sue me, but sponsor me, no. Uh, but again, they can't sue you for your opinion, or can they? I don't know, your opinion is satire, right? Well, let's get along from here and see what's going on. This just con totally confounds me. Dow up, S&P futures up, NASDAQ futures up. What's up with that? Is it what we talked about last Friday when I said that I believe that the uh, plunge protection team is in there propping up these markets to prevent a fast collapse, an overnight collapse? You know, we saw a 900-point uh, up, uh, a down day, and then like a thousand points up almost last week. Saw this happen a couple uh, months ago, and uh, it's my belief, and the belief of a lot of other people smarter than me, that the uh, that's the plunge protection team out there. They do not want a total collapse of the equities, bonds, and treasury markets. They want to prop it up as much as they can and slowly let the air out of that that uh, overinflated tire bubble, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but take a look at this, just confounding to me. And guess what? You know, I've been talking about this little uh, com common denominator here with gold, which has been when the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ's been in the green, so has gold for the most part, except for a couple days last week, uh, and vice versa. When they're in the red, it uh, uh, gold's been in the red too. Uh, and of course, silver kind of doing its own thing there, kind of uh, separating from that, staying above that 19 mark for a little bit in, in the mid 1800s right now. But <clears throat> let's just talk about what's going on here with gold. Everything in the green. Let's see if when this stuff turns red, if gold turns red too. What has gold got to do with NASDAQ futures, S&P, and Dow uh, futures? Absolutely freaking nothing at all. And the only reason it's down is because it gives the, the reason the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ is up um, is solely because I'm sure that people believe that the Fed, you know, the dollar probably weakened a little bit. We'll take a look at the DXY is weakened. Yep, 112, not sitting at that 113 mark. Uh, and uh, uh, people are wondering if the Fed is going to uh, loosen up here and maybe drop interest rates a little bit. Uh, because, uh, <laughs> again, low interest rates and uh, cheap free money is basically what has fueled this stock equity and treasury bubble for the longest time. So basically what we're seeing here, I think, is again, uh, intervention by the plunge protection team to make sure these markets don't collapse overnight, to uh, do it in a systematic way of letting the air out of the tire so everybody doesn't blow up with that giant tire. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> that's my opinion, I'm sticking with it. What has it got to do with price of gold? Absolutely nothing. However, the narrative, the narrative, uh, because the gold and silver markets are broken, folks. Uh, we've been talking about this forever, years now, uh, and even more so now, more broken now than it's ever been. Uh, and, and the reason they're broken is just uh, the price discovery at the CME Group is made by a couple commercial, you know, four commercial banks that are trading against managed money. Ted Butler talks about this. I'm sick of talking about it myself. And if you've been listening to my videos for any length of time, you've heard it over and over. You know the spiel better than I do. Uh, but gold is completely separated. Silver is completely separated from any realistic numbers. These, these prices that you see with gold and you see with silver are simply fictitious paper prices uh, created by a bunch of criminals in the Crimex markets and the uh, LBM markets as well, LBMA markets as well. <clears throat> but uh, let's move along from here uh, because, again, you know, the narrative is, well, you know, this is how they trade. This is how they bang the price of gold down. They bang the price of gold down a couple ways and silver as well, but gold... Uh, they banged out the price of gold by uh, 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 the, the false narrative that uh, rising interest rates creates a real rate 
uh, of return on treasuries, bonds, and other types of investments. And uh, who wants to be in gold when you're getting a real rate of return? And maybe they're trying to say that we're getting close to a real rate of return here, but we're not. It's not even close. Not if you figure the CPI, what it probably really is, which is probably at least 50%, not, if not double what uh, the, you know, they show, the official reports show uh, and Fed data shows. All right, I'm getting out of that. I just wanted to point out the gold and silver have absolutely nothing to do uh, with uh, rising rates because the rising rates are bullshit. The narrative that they pay more is bullshit. Uh, the fact is, it's still negative real rates out there, no matter how you slice and dice it. They'd have to raise rates 50% or double before they'd actually get to probably a break-even point, in my opinion, and the opinion of people much smarter than me. All right, let's uh, <clears throat> move into, I told you, the DXY. What does this got to do with the price of gold? Absolutely nothing. It's what the big commercials use. To, oh, I, I was going to tell you. It's what the big commercials use to slam down the price of gold under the narrative. Again, remember. This is really important to remember, Ted Butler talks about this, is that uh, you, you've got a co in the COMEX markets, and I'm sure the LBAM markets, but COMEX markets, you've got, you've got uh, uh, big commercial traders. You've got the four to eight big commercial traders that he talks about all the time, and the smaller traders, commercials that uh, uh, trade in the price of gold and silver and to help manipulate this markets in a collusive type way. And it's almost like, <clears throat> you know, they, they all know in unison when the sun is coming up in the morning, uh, just like they know exactly when to manage money, uh, who are strictly technical traders, probably work off algos, correct me if I'm wrong, or technical traders, uh, jump in the gold, jump out. And that's how the big commercials have been milking the COMEX markets for years and years. Anyway, I, I just don't want to talk about it. It's something we talk about all the time, and, and, and it gets tiresome if you have, and if you, if you want to know more about it, just listen to a couple of my past videos. We, we talk about it all the time. Look for a particular title. Uh, it has something to say about uh, uh, see me being a scumbag or something. <laughs> uh, satire. Don't you love satire? All right, consumer price index. I just want to show you this as well. Now, what does this have to do with the price of gold and silver? A lot, folks, because this has really got to do with the, the uh, 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 decline in the value, the decline in the buying power of the dollar that's in your pocket, my pocket, your, your parents' pockets, the people, every, everyone's what we trade. Um, and it just took a giant here. This was the Joe Biden bounce right here. I kind of uh, uh, made the chart a little bit shorter here, as you can see. Uh, what was that? August uh, to date. There is the there there is the Joe Biden slide right there, uh, where <clears throat> you can see that the consumer price index for all consumers, purchasing power of the consumer dollar in U.S. city average just took a giant shit toward the downside right there, where it's continuing to go down. Uh, so really. Uh, 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 you know, this current administration, this current uh, 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 Central Reserve, or, or I'm sorry, Central Bankers, the Federal Reserve, uh, enjoyed a little bit of a, uh, uh, a rebound as far as the CPI goes. And I'll, I'll flatten this chart, I'll make this chart a little bit longer and show you. But August, folks, this chart just took a giant shit. Take a look at that. Whoop! Down it goes. Let's look at the one year here, and I'll tell you what I was calling the Joe Biden bounce a little bit right there. There's your little bounces, uh, Biden bounces right there. But <clears throat> again, inflation starting to show that it's not transitory. It's here to stay. What does that got to do with the price of gold and silver? Well, I would say if you laid this chart out, let me take a look at the maximum chart here. If you laid this chart out from 1913 on, uh, you could almost probably uh, take a Oh gosh, you could take a um, uh, 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 invert this line right here, and it would probably almost follow the exact same thing inverted. As the as the fiat dollar declines in its purchasing power overall, gold seems to if increase slowly or at least uh, increase in the same degree or the same speed that this does right here. Someone pointed out pretty clear, silver is silver's the same way, and you can think about this. Back in 1964 and prior, well, I don't even know what gasoline was. Is it a quarter gallon, 50 cents a gallon, but a quarter? Let's just say gasoline was a quarter gallon in 1964. Um, and you know what? Let's take a look here. Yeah, let's just look together here. Uh, gasoline price, because I don't know. <laughs> price uh, 1964. Let's just take a look and see if we can find something per gallon. Uh, 1960, 30 cents. All right, R average retail price of gas was 30 cents per gallon. I was pretty damn close there. So uh, let's uh, uh, take 30 cents per gallon. So in 1964, your your parents, your grandparents would have gone to the gas station. They would have filled up their tank. Let's just use a quarter because it's probably close enough. There was gas for a quarter at that time, I'm sure. Your parents would take that silver quarter out of their pocket and <clears throat> and buy a gallon of gasoline with it, all right? So, 
And what was that silver quarter worth? The silver quarter's worth 25 cents. A gallon of gasoline was worth 25 cents. Well, we got off the silver standard, obviously off the gold standard as well. And I can make the same point with gold uh, from this point uh, in 1919, or I'm sorry, 1913 onward as well. Uh, but uh, that same quarter, if you were to take that same silver quarter in 1964 that your parents and your grandparents used to buy gas at the local gas stations for a quarter gallon, uh, that quarter wouldn't buy shit now. How much, how much of a gallon would it buy? <laughs> you would need, uh, uh, what, 10? In some instances, you would have needed about uh, uh, 20 of those quarters um, uh, to buy ga uh, gasoline, especially in California. Uh, but meanwhile, look, uh, that, that value in silver, it's down a little bit, but the value in silver in that quarter is at least, what, three or four bucks or something like that, more than that, five bucks, uh, with the premium probably around five bucks or something. So that silver has held its value. It's about the same price as gasoline. That's why I'm saying if you were to take this line, turn it upside down on this very same chart, you would see gold down here doing this, peaking here, like down here, and then uh, peaking upward like this, and then trending even further until you got into the Joe Biden slide, in which case we really should see prices taking off dramatically in gold and silver, but you're not. And you know why you're not? Because these fucking markets are broken. <laughs> it's true. Uh, the price discovery at the CME Group COMEX markets are broken. I, you could probably say the same about the LBMA markets and others absolutely broken. And how do I know that? Uh, because uh, supply and demand really are the fundamentals that drive gold and silver. And uh, right now, uh, particularly with the price of uh, silver, we've got a huge demand for silver and a, a small amount of supply, very small supply. Something has really gone awry here. Tells me that these markets are completely disconnected, the paper markets and the physical markets, and that we are certainly, certainly uh, uh, have evidence of a most absolutely broken market in silver for sure. Well, anyways, <clears throat> uh, article here I want to talk about, which is the World Gold Council. They're, they're, pff, listen, if you want to, if you want to be spun by banksters that finance this fucking World Gold Council, these are the worst people to listen to. And listen, they have a plan to dematerialize gold market even more. Their, their great plan for, for all of our benefits. <laughs> No, I don't think so. Anyway, Eddie Spence and Rajith uh, Pakim uh, from Bloomberg News, uh, from uh, corporate media uh, narrative mouthpieces for these assholes. Uh, here, what they say, trading on one of the world's oldest markets depends on the network of high security vaults located underneath Greater London. There are some 50,000 gold bars, each worth more than 650,000, change hands every day amongst the four big banks in charge of processing transactions. Uh, the system, which includes some 500 billion worth of gold stored in many locations, has been trundling along with little change for more than uh, most of two decades. David Tate, who heads, who heads the World Council, uh, and, and, and uh, here I'm going to put my own comment in here, and works for these big collusive commercial banks and central banks, uh, the main lobby group for miners of the metal. You know, if the World Gold Council is the main lobby for miners of the metal, then I tell you what. You, the miners out there got to be fucking dumb. <laughs> this is your this is your lobby. The very same people that just mouthpiece to the banks and and suck up to the banks and all the manipulative behavior that goes on with it. Listen, if you miners out there are uh, 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 if that's your uh, main lobby group, then you're in big fucking trouble. Well, that's actually why you're not making the money that you should be. That's just my opinion. I'm sticking with it. Anyway, the former investment banker is trying to push through changes he hopes will significantly increase demand, including a database using block. <laughs> Here's where it gets uh, just uh, freaking clown world. Uh, using blockchain technology to keep track of most every gold bar in the world. Once that's up and running, he says it should be possible to create a digital token backed by physical gold that can be. Folks, they just want to take their fucking paper Ponzi scheme and turn it into a digital Ponzi scheme. That's all this is. D oh, my God. It gets worse. Uh, market players, uh, well, maybe it, it, it's going to get worse. But the new rules, in effect, made it more expensive for banks to hold bullion. Uh, of course it did. You know, what was it? The uh, uh, Oh, my gosh, I forget the name of it. The uh, recent where they turned gold into a tier three or a tier one asset from a tier two asset. Um, oh, God, it slips me the name, the name, the name. I've said it a billion times. Well, anyways, uh, <clears throat> the new rules made it more expensive for them to hold bullion and, and uh, harder for them to manipulate it and collusively fuck around with the price of gold and silver, all right? That's why they want to do this. Not only do they want bullshit paper prices, they want bullshit-backed uh, 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 crypto price or crypto-backed gold. What? Give me a break. I don't trust these bastards any more than I trust... Oh, 
Let me know what you think in the comment section. Who do I trust less? <laughs> and raising concerns the market will shrink. Yeah, that's what they're worried about. Raising concerns the market will shrink. And in the past decade, gold has faced growing com competition from cryptocurrencies. Oh, stroke me, stroke me, stroke me here, folks. For the attention of investors looking for alternatives to stocks, bonds, and cash, with some boosters even calling Bitcoin digital gold. Well, we know how fucking well that worked out for them. Uh, gold and silver, gold's a 5,000 year asset, no comparison between the two, none whatsoever. And anyone that tried to compare cryptocurrencies and gold is stretching, either stupid and or just fucking naive, all right? I said it, there you go, uh, at least in this point in our lives. And you know what? <clears throat> That's the beauty of owning gold. You don't need electricity to go and check it online to see what your network is worth. You don't need an internet connection. You don't have to worry about it being hacked. You got to be worried about it being stolen, but with, with the good ammo and a good hiding place, you should be fine with that, folks. Best way to store your wealth ever, ever, ever in history is gold, silver, and platinum. Ever, ever, all right? I said it. <laughs> 1651.29 in the aftermarket, some more bullshit markets. I know I talk about these markets. This is a gift at these prices, a gift at that price, a gift uh, platinum at that price, folks. These are just freaking broken paper markets that are giving us the ability to buy this stuff at dirt cheap prices and has for years and years and decades and decades. At some point, the uh, supply and demand situa situa situation is going to blow up in their faces, and it should, it should. And actually, the more and more uh, that more traders out there and more people start to understand, and like miners, once miners start to understand the World Gold Council doesn't work in their best interests, they'll start to leave. Credibility goes down for you know places like the WGC, the World Gold Council. Uh, and the same thing with the uh, uh, LME market. Look at the LME market, how broken it got with the uh, nickel trade in March 8th, uh, when, when that nickel trade just went south and the LME Basically, the casino, like the Comex market, stepped in and said, oh, 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 that card game is no good anymore because our big, biggest player here lost money and we can't let that happen. Anyway, that, that's it in kind of a nutshell. I'm going to move along from here because this is all stuff we talk about all the time, folks. Uh, I, you know, as you know, uh, commercial rare coins and precious metals, which is my brick and mortar here in South Florida. Uh, I've been in this location since 1995. I've been doing this since 1977. I'm a, you know, second generation dealer doing rare coins, precious metals, paper money, and other cool things as well. <laughs> uh, I advertise to be SD bullion, Atmex bullion, JM bullion on their prices on their reasonably priced uh, bullion products. And what is reasonably priced to me? <clears throat> The best deals out there you can buy, the smartest advice I can give to any new stacker, old stacker, any stacker out there as a seasoned professional long-term guy in this business is buy the least expensive premium uh, uh, item that you can that is recognizable in the industry. So buy industry recognizable products. No, not your Uncle Joe, your next door neighbor, your buddy recognizes, but what you recognize as being, uh, or not what your dealers, what the major dealers and the dealers out there recognize. Uh, 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 buy whatever products those are that have the least premium out of everything. Now, some folks say, well, Brian, I want one ounces for trade. I want to buy silver for trade. I want to buy uh, uh, small units for trade in the barter situation. Folks, listen, there is going to be no barter situation. And if there is, you might as well just get the fuck out of town, buy some seeds, and learn how to hunt, all right? You're not going to trade gold and silver to anyone because 99% of the public out there has no freaking clue what a real gold or silver coin looks like. Do you think that Publix or any of the local merchants are going to be able to have testing machines, XRF machines, specific gravity machines? No, they're not. You're going to be dealing with the currency, albeit it may take a thousand US dollars to buy a loaf of bread, but that's what you'll be dealing with. People that sell you the bullshit about confiscation, again, confiscation is a bullshit theme. Uh, and I'm happy to debate anybody online, any of the YouTube talking heads, challenge me in the comments section, challenge me anywhere. I'd love to debate you on the confiscation thing here. Uh, happy to do it. And if you prove me wrong, yeah, great. I doubt you will, but if you prove me wrong, great, because uh, <clears throat> I never learned anything from a man I agreed with. <laughs> and I stole that saying, by the way. You always learn from people you disagree with. But uh, as far as confiscation go, I think that's a bullshit excuse for a lot of people out there to sell high-priced, high-premium products because they have a, uh, uh, a denomination on them. Uh, particularly U.S. Uh, uh, gold, but I won't get into that right now. By the way, as I said, look at this pre-sale, top seller, uh, <clears throat> notify me, notify me. This is SD Bullion, uh, respectable, large uh, uh, internet bullion company like Atmex and JM Bullion. 
uh, and aggressive. I like their prices. Uh, again, the reason I show them here, people say, Brian, why do you show SD, Atmex, and JM? Why do you talk about them, their competitors? Well, listen, if you want to be competitive with the big whales out there, you've got to be able to beat their prices, get better service, and a, bun a whole bunch of other stuff like that, and advertise yourself as such, and that's what I do. I can beat SD, Atmex, and JM Bullion, and there I go, and I plug myself again. Uh, but on top of that, <clears throat> If you're going to be competitive, who you want to be competitive with? You want to be competitive with the big, honest, big, honest companies, big, respectable companies, and I respect these companies. Uh, that's why I'm competitive against them, because I can be. Uh, I don't have their overhead either. I can do a much better job. Smaller overhead, I've always been. One of the secrets to our success here has been small overhead. I've been really cheap my whole life when it comes to overhead. <laughs> uh, maybe it kills me in some degree, but really, and that passes along to customers. Okay, a little secret I told you. I'm not going to go any further here. Uh, what's the best deals out there? It is not one ounce rounds, folks. I'm, I still have uh, a bunch of them. I can do pre-order and beat the hell out of this price right here, twenty-three seventy-six. And, and by the way, remember that is not their price. That's if you buy fifteen hundred or more. But every one of these quantities and every one of these prices, I can beat. Uh, so if you're looking for uh, uh, one ounce rounds, I can beat their price, but there's better deals. Kilos are a better deal. 100 ounce stars is a better deal. Uh, do not buy Silver Eagles. They're overpriced, overpriced, overpriced. If you should do anything, take your Silver Eagles and your 90%. If you got more than a, you know, a few hundred of them uh, or more than a few hundred ounces, trade them for kilo bars or something cheaper. You'll come out with more silver. I'll do the math with you again. We'll do that, we'll do that little math deal again here soon. When it comes to gold, what's the best deal out there? Uh, oh, by the way, silver. Talk to a very good friend of mine, uh, or someone I'm proud to call a good friend of mine. <laughs> uh, I hope he's listening. Uh, but anyways, uh, uh, I've learned a lot from this person. And uh, uh, they're a pretty big wholesaler out there in the uh, silver market uh, as far as buying and selling silver and other precious metals. And they told me personally, and trust me, these folks have done, you know, they're multi, multi millions of ounces of silver and gold, okay? Uh, <clears throat> Uh, per year, and, and uh, my friend that owns this company told me, listen, Brian, we're having a really difficult time placing orders uh, and finding uh, 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 one ounce, 10 ounce kilos, and uh, 100 ounce bars and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, right now, everything's back ordered. Uh, the product's just not out there. And this is someone that is uh, very connected to the distributors, or the people, not distributors, but he is a distributor. Uh, people that are connected, this, my friend is a distributor, and he's connected to the big mints. He's connected to, and uh, he said the availability of uh, retailable silver product is just not there, folks. Now, don't confuse this with the fact that uh, um, O'Brien's saying that there's no silver left in the world. No, I'm not saying that. You, people that uh, often say, well, there's plenty of silver out there. Yes, there is. How much, but the question you ask yourself, how much of it is available for sale? Right? All right. Well, anyways, uh, best deals out there, 100 ounce bars still, kilo bars still, and uh, uh, that's kind of what I'm going to stick with, 10 ounce bars, maybe one ounce bars, but it's all overpriced. But, you know, folks, <clears throat> on top of the, um, uh, 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 the markets are broken. So don't look at it that, like you're paying too much of a premium. Just look at it that the, uh, the underlying base, the, pre the uh, silver price itself is screwed up. It's freaking broken, folks. Broken, broken, broken. That's the only reason uh, that we're seeing these big shortages of silver out there. That's the only reason that we're seeing the high premiums is because the COMEX is broken, all right? At least for the silver, and I think we're going to start to see gold prices as well uh, because the manipulated bastards that are doing the same thing in the gold markets. Uh, Ted Butler pointed out that they pretty much uh, uh, stopped a lot of the big uh, shorting that they did in silver, and then all of a sudden last month I think they jumped into the gold markets. Why? Well, you know, of course, I had a little conspiracy here that there will be a war on gold here, that this current administration and that the current <clears throat> uh, world leaders believe that Russia and China are going to empower themselves using gold. Therefore, gold must be bad and it must be uh, uh, destroyed. But they can't destroy it because they own it themselves, but it must be at least made cheap. All right. Anyway, that's going into my conspiratorial theories here. What did I say about gold? What's the best deal in gold out there? Let's take a look at what's in stock with these guys right here. Again, why do I use them? Because they're a good, reputable company. But you know what? I can beat their prices. And if you want to know how to reach me, watch the end of the video. I'll tell you uh, my different uh, uh, phone numbers and businesses that you can reach to buy gold from me at Commercial Rare Coins and ConcertBullion.com. Uh, <laughs> available gold products. Let's just take a look and see what available gold products out there. Uh, Krugerrands as low as top seller. Krugerrands are a good deal. Looks like that uh, uh, some orders in Krugerrands are starting to come through. 
Uh, gold not having that same shortage issue that silver is, but uh, silver eagles are certainly uh, getting a little tougher to, to find out there. But look at the premiums. It's just absolutely ridiculous. This tells me that silver premiums are just fucking crazy anyway. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Think about the silver premium for eagles. Wholesale's around plus 10 bucks right now, folks. That's 50% of the silver price, a 50% premium for a wholesale buy price. That's the buy price, all right? And look at gold eagles. Gold eagles, gold eagles are starting to get into that 200 plus uh, uh, for one ounce. You know what I mean? Um, look at that, 1637, 16, not quite too, well, no, that's a freaking Krugerrand. Um, anyways, gold one ounces. I don't even see gold one ounces on here. There they are, 1848. Well, there you go, 1650, uh, 50, 50, 18. There's a $200 plus premium right there. Do they, they're not even available, all right? This tells me that the gold markets are going to the broken area that silver is, or gold markets are completely fucked up as well. We're getting to be close to that point, even though gold is not primarily determined in the LBMA markets and the COMEX markets. All right, I'm getting out of there. I'm getting too technical for you. Uh, I want to talk about yesterday's, not yesterday's, Saturday's video, which was late. Sorry about there. Uh, for some reason, I had some uh, uh, internet connection problems, so I didn't get... Uh, I didn't do a video on Friday, I did it Saturday morning, so I figured I'd do a wrap up Saturday morning, but it didn't get uploaded Saturday morning, it didn't get uploaded until late Saturday night, so sorry about that. Uh, close your eyes if you get dizzy, because uh, I do sometimes. Uh, and uh, let me just go over some of the comments here. Uh, your fee, 550 an ounce is criminal. Ah, the first comment right out of the gate from the video, uh, listen dude. Uh, it's not my fee, all right, Kelly. You know, I gotta. I'm gonna give you a lot of credit here, and suspect that you're fairly new at this, and that I, I, I agree, it's criminal. It really is. But don't blame. This is not a, a case of, oh, greedy, greedy dealer. Which God, I can't. If I had a dollar for every time I heard greedy dealer comments from people that didn't know shit from Shinola, uh, I'd. Uh, and there are greedy dealers out there, but this is not a result of greedy dealers, folks. Uh, um, I think I made a comment down here, or did I? No, I didn't make a comment here. Uh, I kind of wanted to make a, exactly, I have to agree though, uh, it, it's uh, the, the 550 an ounce, that's just crazy. Uh, I, and if you watch my videos, I tell you, don't pay that, buy the cheaper shit. So Kelly, you gotta watch more of my videos and uh, you'll learn a little bit more on why that comment is so off. Uh, Tim Curtin says spot fish might be a John Dory. Oh yeah, thanks Tim, I appreciate that. Previous talking about, uh, the video for that uh, uh, prior day. Uh, I only live in a cave half the year. The rest of my spend, yeah, my comment about living in a cave is, uh, gosh, sometimes I'm thinking I should live in a cave. By the way, I finally got my Sprinter van. Ordered it last October, uh, four by four, uh, six cylinder diesel. I know, I know, but I'm thinking of kind of maybe in the next year or two doing some across America trips. Uh, so I figured, wow, what a great way to do it, beautiful van. But just got it a year later, man. You believe that? Uh, and speaking of inflation, my understanding is the van's worth more than I paid for it right now. All right, Michael Matthews, cheers to you. Call my LCS on Thursday, check they were out of silver, went to a nice annual coin show. Oh, good. Uh, one around 20, that's about standard right there, Gary. Spot was around 19, I had six nice, uh, good for you, dude. Got a nice little deal there. Uh, time to end the Fed. Yep, can't argue with that, Michael. Uh, cool, how you doing? Uh, yeah, we have been for quite some time. As you know, uh, I talked about that, the plutocracy. Uh, that this country is, and if you want to know more about that, I thought it was a great video I did on uh, uh, Saturday morning. Uh, check out Saturday's video if you want to know more about that. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> when dollars lose air, they go fiat, fiat, fiat. Yes, they do. In the Fed, restore the currency. Can't argue with that. Um, the only thing on this planet, half the price of its 19th price is take uh, uh, half the price. Yeah, but 1980 was a unique situation of freedom over freedom. Uh, silver was at 50 bucks an ounce, and that was and, and, and the interesting thing is that uh, uh, that was when the, when the hunts recognized, and someone asked me this today, hasn't a billionaire recognized that uh, the silver market is a great place to raid because of the shortages? And I said, I agree with you, but uh, which billionaire should you and I talk to about this? <laughs> uh, the only thing on the planet, half the price. Uh, but again, the, uh, uh, the hunts recognized that, and the hunts took advantage of that by taking all the delivery they could and uh, demanding uh, a delivery on COMEX contracts, which would have broke contract, uh, COMEX at the time. Um, good story that I've talked about many times. People think that the uh, uh, Hunt brothers were manipulative and did something illegal. No, they played completely by the rules. They almost broke COMEX. Uh, and COMEX went and fucked the Hunt brothers and fucked the price of silver. That's how crooked that marketplace is, folks. 
and uh, I've talked about this in videos in the time before. Uh, paid the premium for Silver Eagle. Only reason I bought it was because it was 1986. Good for you. Yeah. Hey, listen, there's some better dates in there, and people collect eagles. They're a pretty cool thing to collect. Uh, fish. I love the fish. Linda, what's going on? Uh, young blue parrot fishes. Oh, th hey, man, there's some fishermen and uh, tropical fish people out there, like myself. Hey, uh, pretty cool. Thanks for your comments there. Uh, yeah, that's true, Silver Liner. Uh, what do you do? You have any ten ounce rounds? I like collecting. I got some ten ounces here right now. They're about on par with one ounces. And again, like I said, folks, big issues on getting ones, tens, and uh, mostly ones and tens are really tough to get in any shape, form, or fashion. Uh, kilos and uh, hundreds are getting a little more difficult as well. Premium is up on those. So yeah, tough finding silver right now. Delivery times are getting. I mean, look at app. Look at J uh, 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 J M uh, S D Boyan. I just showed you. And by the way, I do beat their prices. SD Bullion just uh, says, uh, notify me when in, notify, notify, not available, not available, not ab on almost all their one ounces. Folks, it's tough right now. Um, the blame should be directed there, exactly. I agree with you 100%, right there is 100%. Uh, this ain't gonna happen. Hey, you folks, you find me a grocery store that takes silver coins. Uh, I might move to that neighborhood. Uh, you know, before, before the Armageddon. I uh, love how you say it. How is good day from Arley Beach in the Wits Day Sunday? Did I say that, Brian? I love how you said it. How it is. Good day from beautiful Arley Beach in Wits. I got to look that up. Arley Beach. I suspect you're an Australian guy. Love your country. Love your. Or are you? Maybe. Maybe not. I'm sorry. Um, all right. You, you made me curious. Where is Arley Beach in Wits Day? Uh, you made me curious here. Here, maybe we'll all learn something together here. Where is that place, folks? Anyone know? Am I that ignorant in my geography? And let's see. Ah, like I thought, Australia. They can only come up with those great names. <laughs> uh, cheers to you, mate. Thanks, uh, uh, Neil. Appreciate that. Uh, Francis, greeting from Delaware. Love your channel. You too. Love Delaware, man. I took a, a road trip one time many years ago. Like a, uh, two weeks off, man. Took a road trip in a van. It's funny. I was just talking about that. Old Chevy van that I had. Um, and uh, stopped in Delaware along the coastline. Camped at that big inlet in Delaware uh, overnight. Uh, had a great time, really. Beautiful place. Uh, Keiko Peters, excellent. Thank you. Appreciate that. Salute and cheers to all stackers. You too as well. Uh, Roberto Duran says, nice video. Appreciate your... Uh, I keep on getting... Seven. Oh, my God. Roberto Duran is a... Oh, oh he's another crypto scammer let's do the remove oh, i was liking that name too didn't like the band too much but uh hi there brian i hardly ever come on comedy but i do enjoy and appreciate it yes you too silver shuffle thanks for watching me and i really appreciate it. and by the way folks make sure you hit that like and subscribe button the like button's right there and subscribes up here and that little bell that alerts you when my new videos come up which are pretty much five days a week ah oh, well folks I'd like to thank everybody out there, especially the Wall Street silver uh, apes out there that uh, are doing a great job pulling silver off the market. You're part of the solving the problem uh, of these crooked marketplaces. So thank you very much. And I'd like to thank the moderators as well for allowing me to put my videos up here on uh, Wall Street silver in the Reddit group. Uh, and I'd like to uh, uh, thank the viewers in my new forum here as well, because I'm on a couple different places. I'm going to show you. Uh, here. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, I appreciate that and we'll keep uploading uh, here so in case you ever not see me in the other place for whatever reason you'll find me here. Uh, and where else? Uh, I haven't changed my page here. I'm going to put like gold expert extraordinaire up here somewhere and maybe pictures of gold coins and silver coins. Uh, never my face of course. I don't want to turn you guys off. Uh, but <laughs> I'm only teasing. Uh, I'm a handsome devil and smart. Uh, well uh, let's see here. Uh, but you can catch me here under this at Brian Kuzmar, at Brian Kuzmar on uh, Twitter. Uh, and again, uh, hit and like that page as well. And uh, I'm accessible out there. I'll kind of start keeping an eye on this forum more as well. Need to get a little more active with uh, being directly involved with you folks. And as I always say, this is my theme for the year, which is going to end this year. I'm going to think of a good new one, which is uh, this has been a great one for this year, which is think for yourself, question authority. Most of all, question what you believe to be true, because it may not be. What you've learned in your life 
is based on what you've been told. You know, uh, you know. Look, they lied to you about Santa Claus, folks, and that was your parents, and they love you. So, <laughs> what else? What else has well-intentioned people lied to you about that you don't know that is not true? Uh, again, always look up what you think you know. It may not be correct, and then at that point, you become much better at questioning yourself and questioning authority. Well, that's it. This is Brian Kuzma with ConcierreBullion.com in beautiful Lauderdale by the sea. If you're anywhere in the continental U.S. and you want to buy more than 100 ounces of gold and more than 2,500 ounces of silver, uh, type in ConcierreBullion.com. Uh, or you can call us at this number if you want to freeze the screen, 954-302-2046, ConcierreBullion.com. Uh, we do business on the phone using wires and other secure methods of payment. We are not an online choose, you know, you know, typical uh, Atmax, SD, or JM site. This is for uh, uh, people looking to invest larger amounts anywhere in the continental U.S. And if you live anywhere in South Florida, here's our brick and mortar store, Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. There's a corner of our building, kind of slightly exaggerated, but I've been doing this since 77. I've uh, been in this building since 95. Uh, and you can buy any amount from us. Uh, Walk-in hours are 10 to 4, Mondays through Fridays. You can buy a dollar's worth of silver or gold or a million dollars worth of silver and gold. We can accommodate you, and we can beat all the local prices and the online people like Atmex, SD, and JM Bullion as well. Hey, listen, thanks for watching. Have yourself a wonderful evening, and uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.